Om Shanti. Yesterday there was a very interesting phone call and there was this lady who called and she uh, called on the phone number of the center and Santosh Pai picked up and then she said, I want to talk to somebody urgently. And then Bhai said, okay, I'm here, you talk to me. And then she said, okay, so I want to talk to you about my, con my, my life condition. And then she kept saying that there is no one who she can trust or nobody who belongs to her or nobody who takes care of her. And she went on and on and on. And it was very interesting that she said she couldn't trust anybody and yet she bared up all her heart in in the, on the phone and there was somebody she could trust enough to tell every, everything. And then it was interesting that she said, I have nobody, but then she called a number and then she was attended to for half an hour. And there was somebody who listened to her for half an hour and gave her all the answers and all the support she needed. And it was most interesting that she failed to recognize all of that. And, you know, sometimes um, we fail to recognize something that's happening. So, so you see, when she called her phone was answered. There was somebody who gave her time. There was somebody who gave her the support and the encouragement she needed. Somebody who gave her the love that she was seeking. And yet when she kept the phone, she was not in realization of any of that. And the way the phone ended was, there's somebody on the door, so I will talk to you later and she kept the phone. So why I'm narrating this to you is because, you know, we don't know who to remember. And Baba says that you should always remember that one who is lovely. But the soul is patit, impure right now. And an impure soul has an impure mind, impure buddhi and impure sanskars. And when you have an impure mind, impure buddhi and impure sanskars, then your choices are very bad. So the way you use your mind is for self-destruction. The way you use your buddhi to remember, so the buddhi concentrates, the buddhi focuses, the buddhi uh, makes decisions, discernment. And then all that when you do, when you are impure, those choices are very bad. So your buddhi is always focusing on the bad. It's always creating a bad image of everything. Your buddhi is discerning everything in bad light. The decisions we are taking are bad. So all of these things are happening because the soul is impure. And then the sanskars. So sanskars are often compared to, you know, you, uh, do you use a filter on the phone? So sometimes people these days, they click photos and they use filters on the phone. So your sanskars is, uh, is like somewhat like that. So the filter you apply will change the how the world appears to you. It will change the way the world looks, uh, you know, appears to you. And then the, the filter that we are choosing is always, you know, that which makes the world or our future look dark and bleak and sad and, un, uh, you know, sorrowful. So that's the, or fearful or worrisome. 
So that's the filter we are using because the impure soul makes bad choices with the mind, the buddhi and the sanskars. And uh, when I was thinking about, I was just reflecting on, you know, how we can be oblivious to the obvious. So when somebody is there listening to you, talking to you, giving you support and encouragement, you fail to recognize their presence and you are only aware of the presence of the one you are complaining about. You are only aware of the presence of the problems in life, but you are not, you fail to recognize that it is God sent that somebody is listening and somebody is actually giving you the support you need. And this brought me to another <coughs> thought that probably it's the same thing that's happening with Baba also. So sometimes, you know, when we listen to the Murli and it is said, remember Baba. So people say, okay, so we have to go to the soul world, remember the light or you know, we have to go within and just see the point of light or what. So, are we not able to see or acknowledge the presence of God in our life right now? So, in Bhakti, we have had 2500 years of journey where God was a fancy idea. Somebody you had to leave your home and uh, go and look for in the jungle as if he stayed in the jungle or somebody you had to go to the temple to seek blessings from. But Baba says that I am not some fancy idea or I am not like thin air all pervading around you. I am not some thing of matter. I am your father. And when you do the course, you are given knowledge by the ocean of knowledge. When you attend the class, the love that's given, the care that's given belongs to that ocean of love. When you are, uh, when you are seeking power, so the power to tolerate or the power to face or Whatever powers, Baba is giving everything through knowledge and through presence. And Baba is introducing us to purity, which we never knew existed. So we had no idea about what purity is. And now Baba is giving us purity also because he's the ocean of purity. So Baba says, I'm here and that one whom you remembered in bhakti by you know going to pilgrimages or temples or uh, going to the jungle that one has come to you and he is giving you everything that you need and two things that i liked in the murli today are first thing you should always remember the one who is sweet and Baba says I am the sweetest so you must remember me and you must recognize that I am so sweet that I am giving you all that you need so you know uh, we also have this wrong idea of who is sweet in the world so I hear sometimes, you know, people say they are not as sweet as they appear. So sweetness is not about appearances. So sweetness is about that inner, um, that inner thing that you hold inside. That which makes you feel loved and comforted and happy. 
that sweetness nourished and encouraged and taken care of that sweetness internal sweetness and i i don't think that anybody in the world qualifies as sweet these days that's why you get attracted to the body but then you fall out of love when you see who they are so nobody is pure enough or nobody is loving enough or nobody is happy enough to be sweet so sweetness is like this whole mixture of these seven virtues and baba says you should always remember the one who is sweet so that you become sweet you become like the one you remember so you want to remember this the one who is sweet because when you are sweet you will love yourself and the whole aim is to be comfortable with ourselves and when you are not remembering the one who is sweet then maybe you sometimes you like their company or you get addicted to their company and you feel you are getting something in their company for some time but they don't make you sweet they leave you bitter yes that's why we are miserable when people leave us because they are not sweet and they don't leave us sweet they leave us bitter so how they make you feel while they are there is not the question how they make you feel when they leave is the question because if you are in the company of the sweet you will become sweet and when they leave you you will be so sweet that you will never complain about their leaving and in this world nobody is sweet and that's why they leave you bitter so baba says that i am sweet and i am sweet because i am your supreme parent and supreme teacher so as a parent i am giving you all that you need all that makes you sweet and filled and you know complete inside and as a teacher i am giving you so teacher prepares you for income so a teacher makes you capable enough to earn your income in later years so baba says i am your teacher who is ensuring that for 21 births you will not run out of uh, you know resources so i am that one who is making you so capable and baba says i have come and i am present in your life and it is interesting how we never ask anyone how to remember others so remembrance is something that we do naturally all day right now also if you check you are remembering somebody or something <laughs> so remembrance is so continuous and nobody tells us how to remember someone and we keep doing that continuously and here when it comes to baba we say we can't remember him when he is giving us everything he is like a parent he is giving us uh, all that the soul needs the knowledge the purity the love the peace that we need and he is doing that practically through the murli practically through the classes yes and do you think that any human is capable enough to give so much no human being has the intention or the power to give so much so if you see a sister or a brother you know sharing the knowledge with you it's not they behind that thing it's baba because no human being i tell you nobody has either the intention or the power to give so much 
So it is Baba who is giving everything that I need. He is dispelling the darkness by giving the knowledge and he is stopping us from wandering and you know just getting lost in questions. He is giving us answers, solutions, everything and he is giving us love. Love, the, the practical expression of love is unconditional acceptance and support. So he's giving all that and then he's giving purity. So purity is an element we were not even aware of. And then he says, you see, when you were without a body in the soul world, you needed nothing. And then even in Satyug, you ate, you drank, you walked, but you were not attached to what you were eating. You were not attached to relationships. So you were pure and that capacity lies within you. So he's making us aware of the potential that we never thought we had. He said just like, he says just like a lotus flower has this capacity, this inbuilt capacity where it can stay detached in muddy water and the water will not cling to it. So you the soul also are a pure soul and it's not necessary that you get attached to the environment you're in. And when you become aware of your power, so you know, in the world also people say that um, uh, give awareness of rights. So you know, when somebody, everybody has some rights given by the constitution, but until and unless they are aware of them, they cannot exercise them. So Baba also gives us an awareness of what, what powers we have within. So Baba, Baba says you have this power of purity. And once you start practicing, you know, just knowing that you are pure and practicing living a life free from lust, anger, ego, attachment and greed. So when you tell yourself that my sense of happiness doesn't depend on sensual pleasure and you just you are in the world but you are not looking for sensual pleasure so then you will get in touch with that aspect of yours which is called purity that which ensures that you can stay peaceful and happy without any sensual pleasure or you can stay ha happy and peaceful without getting attached to relationships so you can just be detached and loving with everybody so Baba says, I make you, I'm making you aware of true knowledge. I'm giving you purity. I'm giving you peace, peace, which we never knew. So we didn't know that we can stay in a world of noise and still be peaceful. So Baba says, I'm teaching you and you just look at me. You're my child. So Baba descended into the body of Brahma Baba. So Shiv Baba. God, Parampita, Ishwar, Allah, whatever you call him. That one descended into the body of Brahma Baba and he lived in this world and showed how purity, knowledge, love, peace, power in action can be. And I remember there was this one uh, scene where I had gone to Babdada Milan. So when in 1969 Brahma Baba left his mortal coil after that uh, Shiv Baba so incorporeal godfather Shiv Baba descended into the body of Dadi Gulzar ji until very recently so so he used to come regularly so both Brahma Baba and Shiv Baba used to descend into the body of Dadi Gulzar ji and speak so I was in one of those Bab Dada Milan. So uh, I was sitting in that hall and then, you know, there was this big balloon uh, which was hanging on the stage and that balloon uh, blew. So somehow it burst and there was a big noise and, and you could see Baba. So Baba was sitting on that stage and Baba's even eyelid didn't blink. 
you know so it's it was not even that he bat his eyelid so he was just so calmly and peacefully is ocean of peace so he was just sitting there and everybody else was so disturbed by the noise but then baba was not affected at all <laughs> so then we had a glimpse of what the ocean of peace is like and then the ocean of love so i have shared this earlier also and 2000 3000 children they are just you know going and taking drishti from baba and baba is in the same constant stage of love giving drishti to each one of them and there is not even one slight shift of expression or love in the eyes of baba and he's such an ocean he can be so loveful so baba says that i am not only through my words but also in action i have shown you how you can be in this world and be totally the ocean of knowledge purity peace love happiness bliss and power and baba says that you are my children you are made in my design so baba says when you remember me you will remember who you are so you you always see yourself in reference to your parents don't you yes you always see your yourself in reference to your parents and baba says now you know that you are a soul and you are the child of god and once you start seeing me you start seeing yourself in reference to me so now you see me that i am the ocean of knowledge purity peace and you see yourself as my child so you start seeing yourself in a different reference and you start feeling differently about yourself and when that happens baba says in this new consciousness you start behaving differently and when you start behaving differently then the sanskars you create out of that behavior will be different from the ones you have now so baba says you must know that first thing you remember the one who is sweet because if you remember the one who is sweet then you become sweet and that's what you want to become so just ask yourself today who do you remember and do you really want to become like the one you are remembering so <laughs> and you will eventually become like the one you are remembering so be very wary of this don't take this thing very lightly so if somebody is uh, you find you feel that somebody is not accurate somebody is not okay and then you are remembering them then you are becoming a replica of them just think about this you remember somebody who complains all the time what do you start doing you also start complaining about the one who complains so ultimately you have become like them so baba says why do you want to remember those who are body conscious and those who are um not sweet and even if you if you love somebody or you remember somebody who loves your body then you start loving their body and then their body is a perishable changeable thing so they will leave you very bitter and sorrowful if you love somebody or remember somebody who who is attached to your emotions then you start getting attached to their emotions and then their emotions change overnight and then you don't know what to do with that attachment or they leave the body and their emotions are no no longer available for you and then what do you do so baba says don't remember those who are vicious so when somebody is supplying you with their vice also somebody is supplying you with lust ego anger attachment greed you like it temporarily but then 
that leaves you very barren and bitter when they leave. So Baba says, don't remember the bitter and the vicious because that's not what you want to become. Anybody who is vicious, vicious means attached to bodies, emotions, um, wealth, power, position, they will suffer in the long run because they are getting attached to something that is changeable. So Baba says, I am the one who is very sweet, ever sweet, because I am the ocean of that one which is permanent. I am the ocean of true peace, true love, true knowledge. And Baba says, you remember me. And you remember me because I love you so much that I have come from the soul world for you. Recognize that first. And when you recognize that and then start remembering Baba with love, then you start seeing yourself in different light. So this is very important. And then Baba today says that uh, you must, when you say Baba, so you know we use this word Baba for uh, God. So people say God, Ishwar, Allah, we say Shiv Baba. And Baba says, say Baba from your heart. So do you say Baba from your heart? Yes. So do you understand that he is my father? I am a soul and that is my Baba. So we, when we come to Gyan, we learn these three words or four words. Mera Baba, Meetha Baba, Pyara Baba and Shukriya Baba. Okay, so now I'll unmute you all and you will all say together. Okay. And from the heart. Okay. Unmute everybody and Mera Baba, Mera Baba, Meetha Baba, Meetha Baba, Pyara Baba, Shukriya Baba. Shukriya Baba. And Om Shanti. So these, so you, Om Shanti. And when you say it from the heart, you know, you feel that, yes, Baba belongs to you and he, he does belong to you. But I started with an example that we are oblivious to the obvious. That's the tragedy of this time. So, you know, we, and it's all because of our patit, man, buddhi and sanskar. So, you just see how your buddhi is. Baba is there. Baba is showering his love on you and you are complaining about a human. Baba is showering his you know, blessings and making us the, uh, the, you know, the king of heaven. And we are complaining about little things that happened here and there. So Baba says, this is the kind of buddhi you have. Your buddhi doesn't focus on Baba. Your buddhi doesn't focus on this great um, attainment that we have in Sangam Yuga. And your mind is not able to think about that one who is the ocean of love and peace, your mind keeps thinking about other stuff. And then you are not able to emerge the sanskar of purity and love that will make your life peaceful and pure. You are able to sun emerge other sanskars that Maya has given you. So now Baba says, train yourself to see Baba, to see Baba's presence in your life, to acknowledge the gifts that Baba is giving you and in that recognition, let go of things that are not okay. Yes, it's not a small thing that God has come and belongs to us. So just keep this so much in your heart that other things don't find space in your heart. So, you know, there are sometimes people ask us, don't you see the problems and the faults in others? 
So we say we don't have time to see all that. Our heart is so full of love for Baba. And when there is no love for Baba, you start seeing everything else. So just rearrange your focus in life. And, and this comes with purity. So that's why observe celibacy, eat pure food, don't see, hear things that are impure, so that you will come to a space where your buddhi will become pure and you will start focusing on the eternally visible rather than the temporarily visible. So sometimes say God, people say God is invisible, but I think God is eternally visible and everything else is temporarily visible. But we are not in, our, in touch with our eternity. We are very <coughs> time conscious. That's why the immediate attracts our attention. But if you just purify yourself a little, then you'll be able to acknowledge the presence of the eternally visible. Okay, so there is a question, how to overcome fear or anxiety? I try hard to overcome on my fears by thinking positive, but my body doesn't support. My heart beats, starts to run faster and body starts shivering. So you see that the, the time to get over your feelings is not when you are drowned in them. So, you know, when you don't go and exercise when you are tired. You exercise when you are okay and rested. Na? So, when your body is not having any reaction, early in the morning you get up. When your mind is not being pulled anywhere, you know, when your body is in a state of rest. At that time you practice not positive thinking, true thinking. You practice the truth, I am a soul, I am indestructible by design. I am indestructible by design, do you understand that? And I am unapproachable by design. <laughs> Nobody can touch you, Nobody can reach you. And if you just become self-aware, People will be fed up of re trying to reach you. <laughs> they can say all they want, they can behave all they want and they will not be able to reach your mind. You have that option. I am a soul. This is my mind, my buddhi and my sanskar. Nobody can enter my inner space without my permission. And I am indestructible. Nobody can harm me. Okay. Everybody can do everything with the body. That too, you know, has its limitations. And then I, the soul, am beyond reach. If I don't allow anything to enter my mind, it doesn't enter. Yes. You just tell your mind, stop that. You don't have to go there. And I always tell my mind, you don't have anything better to do today. Now you go and sit there, right? Have some dignity. Don't go there. Okay, and it listens. You talk about dignity to the mind, it listens to you. <laughs> the mind has very good ego. <laughs> you ask it to behave with dignity, it does. So, Baba says that you practice when there is nothing outside. You practice staying in your inner power. And when you do that, and again, you know, this will also happen when you take the right reference point. I am the child of God. And by design, I am very peaceful, very powerful. And when you practice this enough, then you will be in a better position to deal with the emotions that are trying to come up in the face of a situation because of the sanskars you have created. Okay, so this is the uh, thing you have to be careful about. And then today Baba says that 
Baba is called the magician. So, in the world, people call God by three names mostly. Uh, the Jadugar, Saudagar and Ratnagar. So, the magician, the, the businessman and the jewel merchant. Okay, so Baba says that in the world there are many people who perform magic and you know there are these sadhus, uh, the ascetics who perform hat yoga and then they are known to have magical powers. So you know sometimes people will say I went to this guru and he just brought some ash out of thin air. So you know that ash appeared on the hand and then he just uh, smeared that ash on my forehead. So these kinds of things happen. Now I sometimes wonder if somebody is really a magician, why does he have to bring out ash from thin air? So you could just burn some coal and get ash. <laughs> so why do you have to invest your magical abilities in emerging ash out of thin air? <laughs> so let's understand magic first. So so there is this story about uh, Sri Ramakrishna Paramhans and so there was this person who came to Ramakrishna Paramhans ji and he said that you know what Guruji I have done a lot of tapasya and now I am in I have some magical powers which you will be really proud of and um, Ramakrishna Paramhans said okay you tell me what your power is he said, no, you will be really impressed when you see what I have got from Tapasya. So he said, okay, I would like to see. Then this person, he went, he took Guruji and he showed him that he could walk on water. And he said, I have spent years of Tapasya and this is what I have achieved. And then Ramakrishna Paraman said that, why did you have so, why did you have to waste so much of Tapasya on getting this ability to walk on water, you could have just paid the boatman 10 rupees and came from there to here. <laughs> so what, what Baba means by that is, every soul has power. So if you focus your man and buddhi in any direction, you can do whatever you want. But the thing is, to be wise means to know what you want. And if you are an impure soul, you might waste your whole energy and thought on getting something which science can do or which any little tool can do. But Baba says, I am the true magician and I teach you how to use your mind and buddhi to create a virtuous and powerful self out of you. So I teach you how to use your man and buddhi to create a peaceful, powerful, loveful you. And that's magic because when you change, the world changes. So Baba says the true magic is to convert a human into a deity to convert a sinner into, a, into somebody who becomes a giver. So Baba says, I am the true magician who teaches you these things. Okay, And this is why whenever you say magician, God is remembered, Jadugar. Okay? So this is something that we need to understand. And then Baba today says, a Maharati is one who is never influenced by any external influence of Maya. So just like in that question about fear and anxiety, we understood that who is a Maharati? Somebody who has enough power so that when something from the external world comes, you are able to deal with it and not yield to it. Yes, but you need to store inner power to do that. Like you need to have accumulated inner power for that. And when do you accumulate? You don't accumulate when there is a trouble outside. You accumulate when there is peace, when there is... So do you know that soldiers, what they do is, they have only two things to do in life. 
they fight when it is time to fight and they practice when it is not time to fight and baba says you also have to understand that you are soldiers spiritual soldiers and whenever there is a situation you you exhibit what you have learned and other times when there is no situation you keep practicing keep practicing whatever you know about yourself keep practicing whatever you know about baba keep practicing creating the experience of being in a relationship with baba and then when it is time for you to apply that practice you will be able to do it easily okay om shanti